Hey guys, it's Brian and I'm back here with part two of my video for upgrading the manual brakes on my 81 Jeep CJ7 to uh, power brakes. Um, now, sadly, I shot this intro video yesterday and it somehow uh, got corrupt. And um, so I'm gonna reshoot it. Now, I will tell you that I've already finished this project, but there are a couple things that I wanted to go over before uh, we got into this video that were lost, but I'm gonna go over those things now. And just uh, uh, some details. Uh, the rest of the video is intact, so here are the... All right, let's take a look at uh, what we're gonna be doing today. One thing I did do off camera was I flipped this whole assembly 180 degrees. Originally I had this pivot point uh, on top and I found that <clears throat> the, um, the rod here was, you know, close, it was close to the bottom of that opening almost not quite rubbing but it was very 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 close so I also saw a bunch of pictures online where uh, it was this way where the pivot point being on the bottom and so I went ahead and turned it around what I did find was it actually raised the whole unit about two inches to the point where the throttle linkage no longer came close to hitting the booster. So the modification I did here of clipping this corner is pretty much unneeded. Uh, the hood closes fine, everything lines up. So I'm gonna go with this for now. And if I find that, you know, the brake pedal, there's it binds or there's something wrong, I'll just flip it around and the throttle will already be modified uh, to work. The other thing were the lines. So, you remember in my last video, um, I talked about not knowing what to do with those brake lines. So, I went ahead and bought some fittings that, because the brake lines, one was a 9 16 one was a half inch. Um, 9 16 was, I, I thought was going to the front brakes and the half inch going to the back. So I bought these adapters. It's a like this one here is a nine sixteenths uh, male to half inch female, and this is the opposite half inch male to a nine sixteenths female. And the thought was to just put these adapters on their flare nut adapters for brake lines <clears throat> and I was just going to switch it that way and keep the reservoir the same okay the 9 16 line is going in the front and the half inch going into the back part of the reservoir and it's exactly opposite on the new <clears throat> power brake master cylinder. So my thought was use these adapters to get these bore, these uh, bolt sizes the same, or the bolt sizes matching up on the new master cylinder as they did, <clears throat> excuse me, on the old, but talking to people online, they, you know, uh, multiple people had said that uh, they are just reversed on the power brake master cylinder and they're different size lines for a reason and that's so you don't mix them up and you don't have the back lines um, mixed up with your front lines and different diameter uh, brake lines uh, which would throw off your braking so I'm gonna go with that theory and hook it up that way and um, Test it out. If it doesn't work, I will. I'll use these. Uh, one thing, though, I noticed was that 
after having the master cylinder mocked up for just about a week, um, it started to rust uh, quickly. I mean, I'm over you know, by the ocean with salt air, but this it was rusting real quick. So I'm gonna take it off and paint it. Uh, well, you can see it is painted, but and the next part of this video, I'm gonna show uh, me painting it. But I just want to get it painted because uh, I couldn't believe how quickly it started to rust, and it, it was just like an eyesore. Uh, so that'll be coming up just in a few seconds, but. The last thing, the last thing I needed to fix was getting a proper air cleaner. And I went ahead and found this. It's a universal six and three eighths air cleaner assembly. Uh, it can fit a whole bunch of different size necks for, on carburetors. I'm not gonna show you too much about that now because I did do some filming of it me test fitting and all that but let's just say it worked out pretty well it's a nice day we're gonna finish up some of this and uh, complete this video so stay tuned for some more are we gonna spray paint it yeah okay you're good at spray painting. Because this is like a week old. You see this dark gray color? That you like silver see? color? Yeah. Yep. A week ago when I got it, like this color here, you can see of this. Yeah. The whole thing was gray like that, silver. And in a week, it rusted, started to rust like this. In just one week. It's amazing, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna paint it. Is it? It's definitely not stainless steel. No, I think it's cast iron. Iron is like when they start introducing steel into iron, it becomes less corrosive. So this is just pure iron, I think. And An iron I got that black can right out there. We gotta maybe, if you can maybe take all the stuff out of that Speedway box, I think we'll set it on top of there. You can throw that paper out. Entertainment and to show what to do. Yeah, we match like 50 other people. You know what? I look the right feet. Literally, like all your tags. All, <laughs> you have like 20 tags. I 
I didn't do that on this video, the part one that I posted because I didn't, it didn't seem like that did anything. This thing feels like an ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> it's not clean, but it's like clean on the edges, but when it gets to the top, it's kind of like a Spray the Jeep. Don't hold it close. Alright, that's it. See? I'll try it again. mounting bolts for the mounting plate to the firewall that has to get torqued to uh, 35 pounds. So I'm going to do that now. The bolts that were uh, on the mounting bracket to the firewall, those were 9 16 The bolts for the power brake booster assembly um, that connected to the bracket itself are half inch. I'm going to see if this air cleaner assembly uh, will clear the brake booster. I hope it will. Like I said, it's a universal one. So it comes with these two adapters. So this one is too small. And this one fits just right. So let's see if it clears. Oh, it just clears. Oh, yeah. It just clears. By like uh, half an inch. Yeah. Just makes it. What I'll need to do though, the kit comes with two. It comes with this, uh, I, you know, it's like a, a, like a bolt, uh, a rod. You thread this into the carburetor. I'm going to have to take the one I have in there now out because this is much longer. The one in there now isn't long enough and it has this cool little like bolt for that you screw on top so it'll look like that so let me go ahead and get that bolt out and we'll get this thing secured is you lock these bolts together by tightening tightening them all right so these are locked together and then all you do is on the bottom one you can see you, t you uh, loosen that and it turns the whole assembly, turns that whole bolt. 
we'll just hand tight this. Okay, they're locked together, so let's see if we can. Yep, so we will. Comes with the kit. So while the paint's drying <clears throat> on the brake master cylinder, I need to figure out uh, this vacuum uh, port or vacuum hose connection. Uh, I need to connect that to vacuum, uh, to manifold vacuum rather. Uh, I can't talk today. Uh, so this port here needs to be connected to uh, manifold vacuum. And so if you look down here, I've got a port. So I'm going to take that plug off and see if I can get a fitting. I've got a box of all sorts of fittings that I have accumulated over the years. <laughs> Hopefully I've got uh, some sort of barb, hose barb fitting that I can uh, screw in there and then connect it right to this fitting and get the, the, the booster here, the, the vacuum it needs. So I have a fitting, I found a fitting here that should fit. It's a little bit larger of a barb uh, fitting than what is on the brake booster, but I'm, I'll make it work somehow. Uh, I am gonna put a little bit of a RTV, some, uh, the ultra gray, just along the back part of this fitting. And then I'm also gonna use some anti-seize um, because this is a brass fitting going into a what looks like a cast iron manifold. So I want to put a little ADCs on there in case I have to take it out. And a hose clamp for good measure. Because I'm just really, I really had to force it on there. <clears throat> it was, I think this is a 3 8 three eighths hose going onto a, uh, what is this, half inch fitting. So it really doesn't want to go on there, but it'll work. The other side won't need it. It fits on there just fine. Uh, okay, so now it's time to bench bleed the master cylinder. And the reason why you want to do this is because it's most likely been sitting on the shelf for a while. Obviously, there's no fluid in the master cylinder. Um, and you need to get the air out of the piston, uh, all the valves at the bottom of the master cylinder. Uh, otherwise, you'll just once you mount it, you'll just be constantly bleeding your brakes. You'll never be able to get all the air out, and it'll, it'll never bleed right. So, um, basically, what we do is we have we set the master cylinder up in the bench uh, on on the bench vise rather. Uh, get it in there, make sure it's level, and fill it up with fluid. Uh, it, you know, when you buy a new master cylinder, it usually always comes with these tubes here and some fittings, and to bleed it. Uh, with some instructions obviously but uh, what you want to do is um, fill it up with fluid make sure the 
There's these fittings here that just sort of press into uh, the brake, the ports for each brake line. And then to that you attach your uh, small tubes and then you put them using this clip, you submerge them into the fluid. Make sure they're underneath the fluid level, the top of the fluid. And you use this clip to sort of keep it in place as you uh, bench bleed the, the cylinder. And then what you do is you can just use a screwdriver, I'm just using a nut driver, um, and you just uh, pump the cylinder here and it'll force the fluid out these brake line uh, ports and into the little hoses and back into the reservoir. And you do that uh, a number of times until you don't see any more uh, bubbles coming through your, your clear plastic line. So uh, it's just important not to push this, um, this piston, not to bottom it out all the way because you could break the seal uh, on the piston. Uh, sometimes if they've been sitting a while in the store, on the shelf, they become brittle and you don't want to break them. So, uh, all right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and, and uh, bench bleed this uh, master cylinder. So I'm just going to push it in slowly. And push it in until it just about bottoms out. Let it come back. Do this a number of times. You can see all the air bubbles coming through the lines. Bubbles are getting a lot smaller. Put a little more brake fluid in. All right. Now we're going to take these hoses out without making a mess, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put my retainer clips back on. Try not to scratch my nice paint job. So the next thing you want to do is make sure your fittings are very clean. Uh, you don't want to have dirt uh, at the end of this or on your threads. You don't want dirt getting into the valve down here and uh, preventing you from properly bleeding the system. So I'm going to take a little brake clean and clean those off. And now we're going to pull these plugs out that were attached to the plastic tubes and we are going to get these in here uh, pretty quickly.
try not to cross the threads. And you really want to use your flare nut uh, wrench so you don't round over this fit. I'm going to snug these up because I want to, before I do anything else, I want to secure the mounting bolts for the master cylinder to the brake booster and torque them to spec. So I have a 9 16 3 8 swivel socket which comes in handy. Uh, you got to torque these to 30 foot pounds. Uh, the swivel gonna t is going to throw that off a little bit but it'll be fine. Now I will snug these down. Nice. <clears throat> All right. So the next part of the brake bleeding is you want to have somebody in the, uh, the vehicle, and you want them to press the pedal, the brake pedal, all the way down to the floor, and. While they're doing that, you want to loosen up uh, one of these, similar to how you would bleed it at the wheel. Uh, let the air come out, any little bit of air left over, and tighten that up. Do that for the, the front, then for the back, and uh, you know, repeat that a couple times, and then we will bleed the brakes at the wheel. You're just gonna push it to the ground and hold, and hold it. Yeah. All the way down, did it feel like it went down? All right, you can let it up. All right, do that again. Okay, you can let it up. And I'm going to do it one more time. You can push it down. Okay, you can let it up. All right. Thank you. So one casualty of this upgrade is now my uh, coolant overflow reservoir uh, does not fit, and uh, I don't feel like bending these brake lines in a peculiar way just to get this in here so I'm gonna have to come up with something else maybe they used a different one for power brakes but um, maybe I'll use a uh, I'll go the old school roadkill style with a uh, coke bottle or something for now and uh, see how that goes all right so now we're gonna bleed the brakes uh, at each wheel bleed at the bleed each wheel so normally I would um, have somebody pumping the brakes and I would open the bleeder screw and go from there but I actually have this tool I'm going to try out today is a one man uh, brake bleeding pump and um, 
basically you pump it uh, from the bottom up rather than uh, from the top down. So. I'm just gonna bleed these. Down. These fittings just don't work. Have you tried pretty much all of them? Yeah. These fittings are just cheap. You're either too Maybe tight. Be better. You're either too tight or too loose. He's working hard out there, people. He's working really, really hard out there. Daddy cam, daddy's getting old. Daddy cam, only daddy cam. Can't slide mm -hmm. under the Jeep like he used to. Come on. Daddy cam, daddy cam. So the pump I'm abandoning and instead I brought what these uh, one man bleeder screws because this one was uh, completely seized in here anyways and uh, I had to let's see I had to heat it up and vice grip it out of there totally destroyed so parts store had these one man bleeders and I'm gonna, I don't know, I've never used them before so I'm gonna try them out now. All right guys, so all four tires uh, or wheels have been bled and I've topped it off with fluid. Uh, you can see the bleeder screws that I took out. Not in the greatest shape anyways, real dirty. Um, I put in the one man bleeder screws, I bled everything. Um, I have it all buttoned up. Like I said, I topped off with brake fluid, so let's give it a shot. The pedal feels all right and uh, let's go for a ride. Here goes nothing. Pedal feels pretty good.
sensitive. Not used to it, maybe. I don't know. I read that, uh, I was reading that if you had the lines backwards uh, on the master cylinder, or if you had the wrong size lines, it would be either very sensitive or not very sensitive at all. So hopefully I don't have that situation. The brakes are definitely good. They stop you. That's for sure. Man. I'm going to just go for a short ride because I don't want to be in a situation where they don't have brakes and I have to plow into a Prius in order to stop. As soon as these cars pass here, I'm going to test out the brakes. There's a Prius. Speaking of the devil, let's try them out. Ooh. It's got rear end. By a Prius again. Jeez, a lot of Priuses around here. Well, it did stop pretty good. Let me try it again. And it stops. And it stops good. I don't know. Might be alright. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say we might have gotten this. I'm gonna just drive back to my garage. I'm just gonna check for some leaks. And I think we might be able to call this project a success. It definitely feels good. I'm like, I can only compare it to like my daily driver, which is a 2015. I mean, obviously, 37 year old car doesn't really compare, but I mean, as far as the feel of the power brakes, I mean, it feels like a modern power brake system. Like I said, I've been driving this thing for five or six years with manual brakes, and I'm just used to that, how that feels. In pressure that I have to apply in order to break, but pedal, pedal doesn't feel spongy or anything, it feels firm. Yeah, ah, I think we're good. So let me uh, pull it in here and we'll check for leaks and uh, we'll, we'll uh, button this thing up. Okay. Call this project a success. All right, so definitely not leaking. Everything seems pretty good. I've got to take care of this uh, radiator overflow. But as far as that, everything seems intact. All right, guys. So we are. Uh, this project is done, and I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, again, this was uh, upgrading the uh, manual brakes to power brakes on my '81 Jeep CJ7. It's definitely a project uh, a DIYer can do in his garage. I mean, it creates quite a mess, but with just basic hand tools and uh, you know research and and wherewithal and a wife who doesn't yell at you uh, every time you want to come in the garage is is uh is all you need to be able to get something like this done so uh i appreciate you guys watching and i'm gonna have more videos on more projects i'm doing i'm gonna be uh having to i'm gonna make a video on uh fixing my uh radiator overflow reservoir that no longer fits since doing this upgrade so uh stay tuned for a video of that and uh, like comment and subs or subscribe and subscribe if, if, if you it would be great uh, if you don't like it just uh, dislike and negative comments are always welcome and uh, we'll see y'all next time fiction can be fun but I find the reference section a bit more enlightening <laughs> <laughs>